are going to make the Anna Break crossbody. Um, so this is one of my older patterns and I'm just updating it now. Um, I went ahead and I printed all of the instructions. You don't have to print every page of the pattern. Um, if you only want to print the pattern pieces, you'll print pages 14 to 19. Um, you always want to open it up using Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is a free program. Um, I link to where you can download that in all of my pattern listings. So I definitely recommend to get that um, so that you can print your pattern pieces at 100% and everything um, is the correct size. So even if I only print the pattern pieces out, um, I also will print pages two and three so that I have the cutting list um, and I can check off each item as I cut it out. So to get started, let's see, with our pattern pieces, you will cut out along the outside edge of each piece. Um, just using scissors, you can use a rotary cutter, but we'll go ahead and cut out all of the pattern pieces. Oh, hold up. First, each page has a one inch mark to measure and make sure um, that your piece is printed correctly. <clears throat> You'll want to measure that piece on every single page because if you did not have um, your print settings to 100% or actual size, and it was set at um, fit to page, each page could print out a different size. So double check your one inch box on each page of the pattern pieces and then go ahead and cut it out. I would like to point out that along with my pattern pieces, I include um, an additional cut list. So <clears throat> all of the pattern pieces have listed on them what needs cut out of that piece. Um, if you don't print pages two and three of the pattern for like the checklist of the cutting list, then the other pieces that you measure to cut are listed on this additional cut list. So after all of your pieces are cut out, um, you have two pieces on this pattern that need to be taped together. So it is the main panel and the gusset. So just line the pieces up at the matching letters. Um, by butting the lines together, they should not overlap. I'm afraid they're going to move. All right, and I like to use my pretty washi tape for this because otherwise I never use it. So then we'll start cutting out everything. Um, from the exterior fabric, we need two bottom mains. <clears throat> so that's this piece. Um, you'll notice this dashed line on each of the, most of the pieces, not every piece. Um, and that is for your fusible fleece. So you can trim the pattern piece down to cut your fusible fleece out. 
um, or print an extra set of those pieces if you choose. So for my exterior main, I'm going to use this zombie. Um, this was from Rocker by D-Stash. And I, it's a custom fabric, so... But I think they rerun this one often. Maybe not this exact. Like, this has, like, galaxy eyes. Um, I don't know what the exact name of it was, sorry. So, pattern pieces are listed to cut on the fold. If I don't have quite enough of this, um, I have a solid black that I'm going to use for my strap, I think, probably. Um, I have used this on a couple other projects. So, okay. You'll just line up um, the pattern piece on the fold as long as that was cut straight which it seems to be um, and then I like to cut around them with my rotary cutter you can pin the pattern piece in place and cut around it with scissors or you can trace it onto the fabric whatever you prefer um, I just find the rotary cutter to be faster. So I'm going to cut out um, my exterior fabric, exterior, exterior contrast fabric, which will be the front pocket um, and the flap on the front pocket. So you could cut those from different fabrics if you want. Um, for lining, I'm using a waterproof canvas. I ordered this one off of Amazon. Um, I don't remember the weight. I'll link it in the video description, but it's a lighter weight one. Um, but the beauty of using waterproof canvas is that you don't have to interface it. So I don't generally call for that in my patterns because I want my patterns to be written in a way that it's um, items that are available in typically any craft store. So I want you to be able to walk into Joanne Fabrics and buy everything that you need to make one of my patterns. Um, but if you like to shop online, I definitely recommend waterproof canvas for linings. It gives a nice weight to the bag um, and a little more structure. Plus, I mean, not interfacing is wonderful. So, um, And then my exterior contrast fabric is the stripes. So these stripes are made to coordinate with the zombie fabric and that will be for my front pocket. So I'm just going to cut everything out and then we'll be back to interface. All right, so after all of the pieces are cut out, the next step is to fuse the interfacing. Um, the interfacing that's required is woven interfacing. So I use Pellon Shape Flex SF101. Um, this interfacing, you want to read the instructions for fusing whatever brand of interfacing you use. Um, this interfacing calls for um, steam and a hot iron. Um, I always mist my woven interfacing with water um, before fusing it because it will shrink. So I think honestly on the, on the directions of Pellon Shape Flex, it says to like pre shrink it or something. Um, I'm not going to take it all off of the bolt and get it wet to shrink it. So I just spray it as I use it. And that helps it to be, you know, extra steamy also, which helps it to fuse better. If you're using a different type of woven interfacing, um, such as um, woven fuse. A lot of people use that. Make sure you follow the directions for that particular interfacing. Um, I don't know about all of the woven fuse, but the woven fuse too that I just used said to fuse it using a hot dry iron. So definitely check the instructions of whatever interfacing you're using. Um, so you should have a piece of woven interfacing for each piece of fabric that you cut out. Um, if you're using waterproof canvas for your lining like I am, which is not what the pattern calls for, 
um, then you do not need to fuse any interfacing to those pieces. If you're using cotton fabric, which is what the pattern calls for, then you will fuse one piece of um, woven interfacing to each lining piece, exterior piece, and exterior contrast piece. The other interfacing that we're using is fusible fleece. Um, and these pieces are cut only for the exterior pieces. And the fabric or the pattern pieces were cut smaller prior to cutting the fusible fleece or you could just cut out your fleece and then um, trim the seam allowance or honestly, you can leave it if you don't mind your um, fleece being in the seam allowance. But I prefer to trim the fleece out of the seam allowance um, so that the seams don't have that puffy look. So after you fuse, let's see, after you fuse um, woven interfacing to each of the fabric pieces, then you'll have um, your fleece pieces, which you will then center on the wrong side of the exterior pieces. So you'll have one, um, one main panel, one bottom panel, one bottom main, one top main, and one gusset. So the fleece will be centered um, from the sides and bottom. It's a little bit closer along the top since that's just keeping it out of the seam allowance of the zipper. And this is Pellon Thermolam. Um, I don't know the number, but it's in the pattern. And this one also says to fuse it with steam. So I just spray some water on my fabric. And I do this from the fabric side because the fleece will melt to the iron. And I just have my iron on high. And this iron is a Panasonic cordless iron. I like the small compact size of it because I can fit it inside of finished bags. So I'm just going to finish fusing all of my interfacing. Um, and then we'll start sewing. All right, so let's get started with um, the sewing portion. So I want um, one eight inch length of, I'm using zipper by the yard, um, so it's cut to eight inch length. If you're using a pre-cut zipper, it would be seven inch zipper, which is the length of the teeth. Um, the total length should be eight inches. So I'm going to take one um, lining zipper, lining pocket zipper tab, and place it right side against the back of the zipper and then one um, exterior 
contrast pocket zipper tab and place it right down, right sides down on the front of the zipper. Um, we're going to sew that together using a half inch seam allowance. Maybe I should pin it in place. I think that would help. I have clips for a reason. So I'm just clipping it back away from the seam allowance. Um, let me actually just go ahead and clip the other two on as well now. So the lining side is facing, the right side of the lining is facing the wrong side of the zipper, and then the right side of the exterior contrast piece is facing the right side of the zipper. They should be the same width of, as the zipper, um, one and a half inches, or one and a quarter inches wide, and then one and a half inches long. Or, yeah, I guess technically it's one and a half inches wide and one and a quarter long, tall, whatever. All right, so I'm going to sew that on using a half inch seam allowance. Right, I'm going to you'll press the tabs away from the zipper. I'm going to just finger press and then top stitch using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I always increase my stitch length when I'm top stitching. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter stitch length right now. just want to tell you um, I put all of my pattern pieces in the order that I need them to be in to sew them so hopefully look I have my stuff together today I made two bobbins of thread um, I'm gonna use the same thread for everything so I don't have to change throughout I just feel like I'm doing something right today so hopefully everything works out all right so I have my um, pocket zipper tab sewn onto the 8 inch zipper. Now I want to place the zipper with pocket zipper tabs attached right sides down onto an exterior contrast pocket flap. So this is my exterior contrast pocket flap. I'll place the zipper right side down and I'm going to pin or clip along the top edge. Um, my zippers and zipper poles are from mormino.com. Um, she does not always have zippers available. She always has zipper poles, um, and these are called the pop tab zipper poles. She doesn't always have zippers, but when she gets them, um, she lists them in pre-cut bags. I think it's three colors of three yards, so you get nine 
yards of zipper tape. And I don't honestly remember the price, but it's reasonable. Um, and I love that I don't have to try to figure out what color zippers to buy because I struggle. I just ordered thread today and I was like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to buy. So I got black and white and gray and a purple and an aqua. And then I was kind of freeze because I don't know what else to choose. So it's nice to have that already all separated out for you. Um, but anyway, that's where my zippers and my zipper pulls come from. Um, and actually the hardware I'm using for this bag is also from Mormino.com, so. Now we want to place the shorter lining pocket flap. So you'll notice that there's um, two lining pocket flaps that are taller that you cut with the full pattern piece. One is shorter and cut with the pattern piece folded down at the top. So you want to take the shorter one and place it right sides together with the exterior contrast pocket flap. Now you want to sew this in place using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So this should be an eighth of an inch in from um, the seam that you used to baste the zipper in place. Make sure that you move your zipper pole out of the way. When you come to it. All right, now we're going to flip the pocket flaps wrong sides together and away from the zipper and then we'll top stitch beneath the zipper. So let me press that. All right, so we're going to install the magnetic snap part of it into one of the um, taller lining pocket flap pieces. So I'm going to use my pattern piece. Um, this pen is also from Mormino.com. It's a silver marking pen and they're refillable. And it works really well for marking on waterproof canvas and vinyl. All right, so I marked my snap placement and now I'm going to use the um, washer to mark where to cut the holes. I do have listed in the pattern to put a scrap of um, fusible fleece to fuse it to the back of this piece. So you'll want to do that. Put one half of the snap through those holes. It doesn't matter which side you use. Place a washer on the back. And then uh, some people fold their prongs out. Some people fold them in. So if it matters, I don't know. I'm sure it's stronger one way. Um, if your snaps came with directions, then obviously follow those. Um, I think it might be stronger when you fold them in toward the center, but either way, 
All right, once you have that snap installed, I'm going to set the other one out of the way for now. Place the lining pocket flap without snap, wrong side up. So that's this one, wrong side up, snap, wrong side down. Okay, this is right, okay. The one with the snap is wrong side down on top of that. So wrong sides together. And then this one goes right side down on top of those. We're going to leave the top open at this point. And go ahead and clip in place um, down the sides and around the bottom. All right, and then we want to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. And I'm leaving the top open. Um, so make sure you back stitch. Okay, so we're going to trim the seam allowance down to one eighth of an inch. And this is important that you actually trim it to one eighth of an inch um, for when you turn it right side out. We're going to press and then we're going to top stitch using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and that will enclose these raw edges in the seam so they're not exposed inside of your pocket. So very important to cut this down to an eighth of an inch. Just don't. Be careful not to get too close to your stitches or to trim through them. So when I turn things right side out, I have this um, stick I use to push my corners out. So just flip that right side out. And then smooth the corners with the stick. And then press really well to make sure that the entire pocket is very flat. And that all of the seams are ironed really well so that they will be enclosed in that quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I have my pocket flap pressed well, so I'm going to clip the top closed because we are going to baste across here. All right, and I want to top stitch all the way around the entire pocket using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just make sure that you have those corners, so the curves at the bottom, um, that the seams are rolled out really nicely so that your curves are curved. All right, so I'm going to increase my stitch length again. Um, and the stitch length I'm using, oh, I already said, I think four and a half millimeter. So if I'm sewing on vinyl or leather or cork, I tend to use uh, longer than that. My sewing machine only goes up to five millimeter. Um, but I would use longer than that, even if I had it for vinyl leather and cork.
go nice and full around the curves. Um, I stop and lift up my presser foot frequently. And I also will hand stitch where needed, just to make sure I keep my seams really nice and straight. Especially since I'm using a kind of contrasting thread. across the top of this as well so back up a couple stitches and I'm just going to base this close using an eighth of an inch seam allowance as well Oops. and I just moved the zipper out of the way um, so the edge of the zipper is nice and straight or I pulled the zipper pull out of the way snap attached. Now we want to take our front pocket piece. We want the exterior contrast front pocket piece. Hopefully that doesn't look funny with um, vertical and horizontal stripes. So I'm just going to set that pocket flat out of the way. So I need my pattern piece. To mark the snap placement and I do also list the placements in the pattern. Um, like the measurements for them. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and just mark this on the back as well so I can place my um, fleece scrap directly over that mark. All right, so I'm going to place the washer side of this directly over the mark that I made. And then I'll mark the two lines for the prongs. And then I just cut through these with my seam ripper, being very careful not to cut my slits bigger than the marks I made. So then you just push the prongs through. Um, and you could also use fray check or glue on your fabric um, so that it does not fray. And that will help the snap to stay in place. Place the washer on the back. And then again, whether you open your prongs or close them, I think is personal preference. I think that'll be fine with the horizontal and vertical. We'll see. All right, now I want to mark a quarter inch on my darts. All right, so just a quarter inch in from the edge of the dart, make a mark. I'm going, it's important to not have your, um, interfacing larger than your fabric because then your lines won't be precise. Repeat on the other dart and then we're going to repeat this um, on the lining darts as well. And this is on the wrong side.
for me, I find that this is the easiest way to sew darts and have them be even. So now at each of the darts, I'm going to fold the fabric um, so that it's right sides together. And then you're matching the raw edges of the dart and then I'm just going to sew along the marked lines. So if you've watched some of my last videos, you heard me complaining about my chair. And then the chair I ordered from Amazon just never showed up, um, which I was able to get a refund for, but I, it's still, I don't know, the tracking doesn't even show anything anymore. It was shipped um, around, I ordered it on Black Friday, I think, so, and right now it's mid-February. So I finally bought a new chair, and I was cheap, and I bought this $40 chair from Walmart, and the wheels don't, like, they're, they don't rotate when you move, so... It's probably not any better than my last year. When I get to the edge of the dart, I just backstitch. And I'm going to repeat that on this dart, and then both of the um, lining darts. Alright, now I'm going to press all of my darts. Um, I can, what do you call it? If I press the darts on the lining outward and press the darts on the exterior inward, then they just fit together. And I don't know if there's a name for that. Alright, so now I'm going to place these right sides together. Um, I'm currently on step 11. So first, nesting? I don't know. This seems nest together? I'm not sure. I'm going to match up the darts though. And then clip together the rest of the seams. And we're going to sew all the way around, leaving a three inch hole, I think, along the top. Yep, for turning right side out. So I just want to make sure I leave that three inch hole here, but I'm going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. When I 
I pivot at the corners, I always stop with my needle in the down position. One more stitch. And this bag is one that you definitely can sew on a domestic machine. Um, you do not need an industrial machine to sew bags. Um, to cert sew certain materials, and I'm sure there are certain patterns that you probably don't want to do on a domestic. Um, but I think it's more to do with your materials and knowing what your machine can handle. So this has all of the fleece um, trimmed back out of the seam allowances. So definitely that makes it um, domestic friendly. But as a rule of thumb, if you are sewing on a domestic, it's easier if you trim back your seam allowances um, on your fleece and foam and thicker interfacings. Um, certain vinyls just aren't great on domestics and the same with like leather. I have not sewn cork on a domestic, but I did sew my bags on a domestic machine. It was a Brother PC420 and I used that for years and I made bags. Um, not to say that it isn't definitely easier to have an industrial because it is, um, but it's not impossible to have a domestic. You don't have to spend a thousand dollars or whatever on a sewing machine to be able to make bags. So, I, I think if you're you just started out sewing and you're sewing bags and it's a hobby um, I wouldn't run out and buy an industrial machine immediately wait and see if you like it if you stick with it it isn't necessary all right now I'm going to trim these seam allowances down again to about an eighth of an inch and I'm only going to keep the extra seam allowance along that hole that I left for turning right side out trim at an angle um, for my corners so that it's really close to that seam allowance so that the corners pop out nicely. All right, and then we're going to turn this right side out. Um, we're on step. 11 so I think turn right side out and press well folding the seam allowance in at the opening pin the opening closed so we're not going to top stitch anything just yet so again I'll turn this inside out or right side out and then I'll use my turning stick is what I call it to poke out my corners um, and my curves and really all the seams I just kind of go along the inside in all the seams and really push them out really well um, people use chopsticks for this I wouldn't use a super cheap chopstick it would prob probably break but this came with a tube turning kit or something that I have from um, that I got at Joanne Fabrics. It was Dritz brand, so I just took that out of there. Um, I also I, before this one I had a stick that I lost that came out of a bag of stuffing. That's meant for I think if you're stuffing it down into like stuffed animal limbs or something. 
All right, so this is pressed really well. Um, now you want to finger press this in half to find the center. Um, I already just kind of pressed it over there at that um, iron. And now you want to take something that's erasable and we are on the lining side. We want to measure and mark two vertical lines, each of them two inches from either side of the center mark. So let me mark my center with this chalk pencil so that I can see it. straight it is okay so then we want to mark two vertical lines on either side of the center lines that are two inches away from the center okay and then on this side it's hard to see where my lines are this ruler. All right, both of my lines are marked. Um, now I want to fold the front pocket lining side together along one of the creases, which I believe should line up with the other line that you drew. Let me check if this is directly along the line that I marked. Yep, so the side of the pocket falls just along the other line when you fold it along one line. I don't know if that made any, any sense. All right, so I want to actually press this. All right, press really well. And now I want to top stitch along the seam or this fold using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom so that my top, top thread stitching is what shows on the front because this front part is what will show. Oh, and make sure you're using your longer top stitching um, stitch length. And then I want to repeat that for this other line. Use my chalk pencil. I'm going to just mark the tiniest mark along the top and bottom of my um, exterior contrast with the chalk pencil so I know where that line is a little bit easier. And really, you could mark it on the exterior side, um, but then you'll have to make sure that you erase it. So by marking it here, it doesn't matter because it's sewn into the seam after I'm done. All right, so I'm going to press this well. All right, and then again, using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, top stitch along that fold. Now from those folds, we want to measure two inches over. So I'm just going to take my ruler and lay this as flat as possible. 
and I have my chalk pencil and I'm just going to make small marks um, at the edge two inches from that seam. And then you want to bring the folded part that you sewed down on top of that two inch mark. And I will press this also before sewing and repeat that on the other side so that the pleats go toward the back and you have a nice wider portion in the front center. And it will be like this. So I'm going to press these seams well. I'm going to press these creases, these folds well. And now that that is pressed, we're going to top stitch along the top of this pocket using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, and this will hold the pleats in place along the top. And I do have my sewing machine already set to my longer top stitching stitch length. So I'm going to back stitch a couple stitches at the beginning. Um, just make sure that those pleats are pressed in well. And this also closes up the turning hole that we had in the top from turning the pocket right sides out. Number 16, we want the exterior bottom main that has the fleece attached. We are going to place that right side up and place the assembled front pocket on top, lining side down, centered, and one and a half inches down from the top raw edge. So let's see, centered, I'm just going to press this and I'm going to put the tiniest little clip along the top. Um, the seam allowance here will be 3 eighths of an inch so make sure if you do that that your little clip is less than 3 eighths of an inch. Centered and one and a half inches down. So I'm just going to mark one and a half inches with my ruler and I'll leave my ruler here while I place my pocket on top. And I still have my center marked. I'm going to actually mark it also um, on the exterior contrast side so that I can see that. And place it one and a half inches down and centered. And then once I pin this in place, I'll also double check to make sure that it's centered. Um, so here you'll actually need pins. So if you're using fabric that you cannot pin, um, leather or cork or anything like that, then um, you could use some double-sided tape or something like that. Oh, you could use those sew tights. Have you seen the sew tights? Um, I need to order some. I don't have them. They're like two magnets and they're relatively thin and flat um, 
and you literally place one under your fabric and one on top and then they hold it together. So it's like pinning, but not, and no holes. So, and how easy would that be? And you're not gonna poke yourself because we all know I bleed a lot when I pin. So definitely need to try out those sew tights. And I did see, I don't know who likes Tula Pink fabric or who doesn't like it, but anyway, I did see recently that Tula Pink came out with her own sew tights. Um, and I can't think, they're shaped differently. Hearts maybe? So they were like a cute, cute shape. I don't remember. Um, you know, I'm going to want to make sure that this is also centered along the bottom. So let me just check this real quick before I pin the whole thing. I don't know. This is like impossible to not get my head in the video. I don't want my cell phone camera. It's about one and a half inches from that side. Oh, and it's like one and a little bit more from that side. So I'm actually going to fix this right now. So it might be a good idea to pin the tops first. Once you make sure that that is actually centered. sure this is still straight along the top. It's a little bit off. So this might be the hardest part is just continually measuring and making sure that this is on here straight. All right, so My center is and it looks straight. Is it a good idea to eyeball this? Probably not. So probably best to pin at the tops, make sure that's straight, pin at the bottom center, and then go from there. Pin those pleats down. All right, and then from there, I'm going to pin around the pocket. And then I'll double check one more time before I actually sew it in place to make sure that it's straight and even and centered. pins really bent. So I have this thing where I like to sew over my pins, even though you shouldn't, and I do it anyway, and I always do, and I'll probably never stop. But that's why my pins look like they do. All right, I think that's all finally pinned. Now I want the sew tights for sure. All right, so it's an even one and a half down from the top, one and a half inch from that side, one and a half from that side, uh, and it's about one and three quarters from the bottom, but it's straight and that's what's important. 
So let's go ahead and top stitch around this to sew it on. I'm just going to start on the right side and make sure you back stitch this well since you know there will be some pressure put on the top of your pocket from getting in and out of it. You could also place a couple rivets at the top corners, one here and here, to help hold the pocket on um, and give it some extra durability. Go ahead and remove all of these pins. I'm going to um, rub that chalk mark off. All right, now we want to take the front pocket flap and um, match up the magnet. Your flap should be just as wide as your pocket at the top and lined up with the top edge of the bag. All right, so we're going to go ahead and clip that in place. Actually really like the way that looks so all right and then we're just going to base this with a quarter inch seam allowance Step 18, you want to match the bottom edge of the exterior top main to the top raw edge of the exterior bottom main with the zipper and pocket flap sandwiched in between. Um, so if your fabric is directional or you fussy cut to make it match up, make sure you have that lined up properly. I'm just going to... Um, Let's see, I want to do this, maybe get that side up. So I'm just going to clip that on, matching all along the top edge. Well, obviously I'll move my zipper when I get to that point. And I'm going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. and my shorter stitch length. Just 
pay attention to where your zipper pull is. And when you reach that side, um, move it out of the way. I forgot how much I love this pattern. I carried one for a really long time. I actually have two different ones that I carried. Um, now we're going to press the seam allowance up. The seam allowance is up and the top main is pressed up away from the zipper. We're going to top stitch that using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we want to set this aside and we're going to make the exterior back. So I have the exterior back main panel. Um, I need to find the center. I'm going to mark the snap placement for this. And you could use your pattern piece, but I did trim mine down. Rather than printing a second set to cut the fleece out. Um, so that's not going to be an exact measurement. So two and a half inches down and centered is where that snap placement is going to be. All right, so I'm gonna center this up there. And this piece already has fleece on it, so I do not need to fuse a scrap of fleece. I'm going to use the washer to mark the prong spots. And then use my seam ripper to cut those slits. Um, I don't think it matters, again, which side of the snap you use in which spot. Alright, so that snap is installed. Now we're going to install one in the bottom, the lining bottom main. All right, and I want to measure, or I'm going to fold this in half to find the center. And then I want to measure one and three eighths of an inch down. And I'm going to make a mark there. And then I'll install the other half over that mark. And again, um, you'll want to fuse a scrap of fleece on the wrong side of this. not like to actually fuse really that easily to this waterproof canvas so I'm just gonna stick it on let's see I'll place the washer 
um, snaps have like really strong um, prongs. All right, so that is attached. Step 21, we want to place the exterior bottom main right sides together with the exterior or the lining bottom main that has the snap installed. Um, match the top edge. And we're going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. Turn my seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch. All right, and then we're going to press these bottom mains away from each other um, and wrong sides together. All right, now we're going to top stitch this seam using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I feel very repetitive when I keep saying that over and over again. Alright, now we'll place this on top of the exterior main and attach the snaps. And then we'll clip this in place. I'm going to make sure that this is straight. It should be one and a half, about one and a half inches down from the top. It's just a little bit over that, but not like a whole eighth of an inch over that. So I'm just going to clip this together down the sides, around the corners, along the bottom. And then we're going to baste the pocket in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we want to set that aside, um, and then we're going to and install our interior zipper pocket. Okay, so we want first to draw our box that will be seven inches wide, seven inches by one half inch, one inch down and one inch in. Um, from the top and I am marking on the wrong side of a interior zip an interior zipper panel interior zipper pocket panel okay seven inches long 
and then half inch below that we're going to make another mark that is also seven inches long and then connect the ends. And now I'm going to place this centered. Everything's always centered, so not always, but I'm gonna mark my centers. So I'm going to put the tiniest little snip in the top and bottom of this to mark the center. It's a little bit trickier um, with the waterproof canvas because it doesn't really crease that well. And this waterproof canvas is actually like a thinner one. Again, I don't remember what weight it is. I think 600 whatever. I don't know what units of measure, I guess, they come in. Um, Alright, so I want it to be one inch down from the top. And centered. And then I'm just going to make sure it's nice and straight and I'm going to make sure that I'm centered and have an even amount um, on each side of the pocket which is a, just over one inch on that side should be about one inch on each side I'm going to pin this in place another prime example of when those sew tights would come in handy um, oh, those would also be really good for sewing straps on. I'm ordering some. Like if you had, uh, uh, I don't know, like your strap connector, but if it went all the way down the length of the bag or, or, or however for strap connectors, I think it would be really good. Okay, so I use a shorter stitch length for this line of stitching, and I'm just going to sew all the way around this box. Remove all my pins. Um, and these were also right sides together. I don't know if I mentioned that. Now I want to make a mark directly down the center of the box that stops about half an inch from each end. And at that point, I will draw a line um, from the end to each of the four corners. going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut directly along that line through both layers and be careful not to trim through um, the stitching on the box when you get to the corner. 
You want to get as close as you can without trimming through it. press this um, wrong sides together through the box. All right, the zipper pocket panel is pressed. It's flipped through the hole and pressed wrong sides together with the lining bottom main. So now we want to insert our number three zipper. Um, I wanted to use a matching zipper as the rest of them, so I'm actually using a number five, which I normally don't for um, lining pockets, but I am this time, so it's fine. I'm just going to place some double-sided tape along the edge of my zipper <clears throat> to hold it in place. Um, I usually use washable glue sticks, so I do that method. If you're watching any of my other videos, you'll see that. Um, but since I'm using um, waterproof canvas, the glue stick doesn't really stick to it that well. So I find it easier to use um, double-sided tape. You can also pin your zipper in place or um, some people will hold it in place with scotch tape, which you can then sew directly over. Um, and then just pull the scotch tape off or masking tape would work also. I don't know how well masking tape would hold to waterproof canvas, but these are options. All right, I want my zipper to close to the left, so I'm just going to work with one edge of this at a time. So I'm going to place the bottom edge I want to make sure it's centered nicely. In the opening. And then I'll just press that down to the zipper, onto the zipper. And the double sided tape will hold that in place. All right, and then we'll go ahead and stick the top down as well. Um, and the double-sided tape that I use, I get from Wawak. I know I say that wrong every time. Wawak. Wawak. W-A-W-A-K <laughs> dot com. Um, I also buy a lot of my thread there. I buy... What else do I buy there? I just bought a pair of scissors there. They have decent sales. Often um, their shipping is not too expensive, so... All right, now we're going to sew all the way around this, hold it in place, and I'm using my longer stitch length that I use for top stitching. So a four and a half millimeter. Uh, let's see, I wanna start here. Just pick a spot, back stitch a few stitches, and then you'll sew all the way around the box. down in here. And I use an eighth of an inch seam allowance again for this. stitch longer than that. I'm 
trim my threads. If you notice, I always trim my threads as I go. Um, I think some people will kind of leave them hanging and then trim them when they get to the end, but I feel like it gets messy that way. So now we're going to place the other um, interior, interior zipper pocket. I feel like I say that wrong every time. Right sides together with the one that's attached to the zipper. And I'm just going to clip around the sides and around the top. Um, we are going to leave the bottom of this open. sewing this together using a half inch seam allowance. And I make sure to back stitch this well since you'll be turning the entire bag right side out through the opening in the bottom of this pocket. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. So that was step 27. So now we want to attach the um, zipper panels to the long zipper. So I'm just opening that zipper pocket now so that I don't forget later. So I have four zipper panels. Um, first you need to press half an inch of each end to the wrong side. Um, I already did that. And I have my 11 inch piece of zipper tape. I'm going to open this end and first I'm going to fold back. I think how do some people do this like this, but I don't like that. Hmm. Okay, so let's try something here. And I'm not gonna put it in the pattern this way because I do usually, no, I don't like that. Okay, whatever. So I'm just going to do like I always do. I'm folding that back at a 90 degree angle. And I'm going to sew that down. And then I want to 
fold the other side back the exact same amount so that they match. Okay, so we're going to now, let's see, I want to place the zipper wrong side down on the right side of a zipper panel. I want to keep that folded edge back away from, the folded edge of the zipper back away from the folded edge of the zipper panel by about a quarter of an inch or so, so that it doesn't stick out um, the zipper panel when it's sewn together. And I'm just going to unzip this, but not all the way. Don't pull your zipper. Well, if you pull your zipper pull off, it can be put back on. But... All right, now I'm actually going to do this all at one time. So I'm just going to also place another zipper panel right sides together with that one with the zipper sandwich in between and clip all layers together. Now we're going to sew this using a quarter inch seam allowance. And just make sure that all of the edges stay nicely lined up. And I'm using a shorter stitch length for this. Um, I have it set at three and a quarter. Now I'm going to press these zipper panels away from the zipper and wrong sides together. All right, so I pressed that wrong sides together, um, and now I'm just going to top stitch all the way around that panel using my longer stitch length. And using, obviously, again, an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
here I want to use also an eighth of an inch. If it's a little bit over, that's fine. Right, and then we're going to repeat that process with the other zipper panels. Well, let's actually attach them with it, so or with the zipper closed, so I can make sure that they're even. to unzip it and let's see let me just work out this area right here where it's kind of bubbling curving I don't know So now we're just going to again sew along this edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. And now I'm going to, again, press these away from the zipper, wrong sides together. All right, and again with my longer stitch length, top stitch all the way around these zipper panels using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once we have that done, 
step number 29, we're going to fold the zipper tab. Um, I already folded mine. So what you want to do is draw a line that is centered lengthwise. Um, mine was not centered, as you can see. But draw that on the wrong side and then fold each of the long edges into that line and press well. And then um, fold each of the short ends to the back at a half an inch by half an inch. So what I do is mark one line um, or mark a line that's one inch from the end and then fold to that line and then I'm folded half an inch and then fold that in half and then you'll have a square zipper tab. I want to place the end of my zipper into the zipper tab only about halfway. And I'm going to clip that in place. And then we're going to sew this on by using what seam allowance? One eighth, of course. So top stitch all the way around the zipper tab using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I have the measurements um, so that the zipper tab is slightly wider than the zipper so that all of the raw edges of the zipper can be enclosed inside the zipper tab. Okay, so once that's sewn, um, let's see, on to step number 31 with the lining bottom main with the zipper right side up we want to place the zipper panel right side down and centered so I have the center marked there I'm going to mark the centers um, along both sides of my zipper panel and I'm clipping just ever so slightly in because you do not want to clip past your seam allowance so I mean I'm literally clipping like an eighth of an inch in and I'm going to actually go ahead and do that on my top mains. And then just throw it across the room, it's fine. And on the top of the other lining bottom main. So all of my centers are marked. All right, and now I want to place the zipper panel right side up, matching the center marks. And my zippers are closing the same direction. So both zippers should close to the left. I'm going to reopen that so I don't forget to open it later. Even though I have it like in bold at the bottom of step 33 to unzip that zipper. You can never tell yourself too many times. So I'm just going to pin this together along that top edge and then I'm going to baste in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Thank you. 
want to take one top main, find my center. Oh, you know, really, it doesn't matter because the ends are going to match up. <laughs> this is the same width as the um, lining bottom main. So the center matching part is kind of irrelevant. Right now this seam you should sew using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to actually real quick repeat that. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm going to press the seam allowance up um, and press the top main up away from. Now I'm going to top stitch this <laughs> using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. going to repeat this to attach the zipper panel to the other lining bottom main. So first I'm matching up the centers. Pin all the way across, clip, whatever. They pin universally. All right, and now we're going to baste this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Really love the pop of this lime green zipper with the purple. So glad I decided on that. Um, and if you didn't see, the teeth on the zipper are like iridescent. I don't remember. Again, I got them from Mormino.com, and I don't remember what she calls them. But it's like an oil slick almost. You know, like oil in a mud puddle. So it kind of really goes with the um, rainbow hardware. Alright. Now I'm going to... Clip. Clip the top main, lining top main, right sides together with the zipper panel sandwiched in between. And I'm going to sew this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Um, and my shorter stitch length. Alright, and again, we're going to press the seam allowance and top main up away from the top 
top stitching this. You guys are gonna have one eighth inch, see what I want. Unzip your interior zipper pocket. If it's not unzipped, unzip it. Unzip it. Okay, so now we are going to mark the center along the bottom of everything. So, um, interior or lining bottom means press them right sides together and snip, snip the bottom center to mark that and again on the other side I can't believe I just said that snip snip all right and then we also want to do this on our exterior so just fold them in half to find the centers you can clip it you can uh, Mark it with whatever, a pen or a marker or whatever. It's kind of easier just to clip it. Just be careful not to clip into your seam allowance. So, I mean, here the seam allowance is half an inch, so really that's quite a ways. And then on the gusset, you'll fold that in half right sides together or wrong sides together. It doesn't matter and clip on each side of the fold for your centers and repeat that on the lining as well and i just realized that i'm using rainbow hardware rainbow zippers rainbow zipper tape i do not have a rainbow strap slide and i know i can't buy that anywhere locally so i'll have to order one online and show you guys how to make the strap with like a nickel or something. I thought I ordered some. I'll double check. Okay. I don't know why I just put my pins away. My clips. Alright, I'm moving my lining out of the way. Get all my clips back out because I'm going to need these. Alright, now we're going to Put the gusset on to the main panels. So I'm starting with my exterior and first I just clip, um, let me think, which way do I sew this? I sew with the main panel facing up and kind of wrap the lining around it or wrap the gusset around it. Um, so right now I'm just pinning, clipping, Um, along the bottom center, a couple pit, a couple clips along the bottom, and then match up my top edges and place a couple clips there. And then I'll do the same on the other side. way all right and then I'm just going to ease around these corners
right, so I'm going to continue pinning and clipping together around this side and easing around the bottom corner. Uh, some of my interfacing doesn't line up, so I'm just lining up the edges of the fabric, not where the interfacing is kind of a little bigger. All right, and now we're going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance and shorter stitch length. All right, we're going to repeat that um, for the other side now of the exterior. I think if you didn't mind having a slouchier bag, and especially if you use um, water waterproof canvas as your lining, that you could skip the foam altogether on this and it would be fine. It just gives a little more structure. If you get wrinkles in your corners, then just smooth those out and kind of redistribute the fabric, I guess.
Now I'm going to sew this together again using half inch seam allowance. that you can't see any of this with my camera placement since I put the bag up. But it's easier for me to lift the bag up like this to sew around the corners and get them nice and the curves nice and curved and not choppy looking. stuck on something here. I've got the fleece like sewn to my foot. I don't know what it is. I'm going to double check inside my bag real quick to make sure that I don't have any um, puckers in my seam allowance. And then I'm going to trim these seam allowances down to about an eighth of an inch. So I trimmed that seam allowance down. I'm going to set my exterior up out of my way. And now I'm going to repeat the process to attach the gusset to my lining panels. Um, this is a little bit trickier just because the zipper panels are already attached. So I find it easier to have the zipper unzipped. Um, yeah, maybe not. Let's see. We're going to leave it zipped for right now. Okay, so first 
I'm matching my bottom centers again. And this is just exactly the same way, except I'm going to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance um, so that the lining ends up being just a touch smaller and that it fits down inside of the exterior nicely. So just when you sew this, make sure that your zipper tab is moved out of the way. Um, when you sew the side with the pocket, you'll want to make sure that the pocket interior, in, I cannot say that word, I swear. Make sure that the interior zipper pocket panels are pulled out of the way. Okay, so this is easier. It's kind of easier to pin it, clip it with the zipper closed, but I think it's gonna be a little easier to sew it with the zipper open. And I'm using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then let's repeat that on the other side. Um, if your zipper's unzipped, make sure that you don't twist it here. So I'm just going to place a couple clips along the top and on the 
top of this side also. And then I'm matching the bottom center. Down the side, we are almost done. Sew this together again using a five eighths inch seam allowance. Make sure that your um, zipper panels stay out of the way. Your interior zipper pocket panels. When you take your clips off to keep things lined up stuff. Don't take them off too soon. Don't do what I do. to trim these seam allowances down to about an eighth of an inch as well.
let's make our strap connectors real quick, which I already folded, um, but it's like any strap. So folded half, maybe bring the short ends together, open up, fold each of the short ends into the center crease, press, and then press in half again along the original crease. And now we're going to tap stitch along each of the long edges. to slide um, a rectangle ring onto the strap connector and baste the ends using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then take the exterior of your bag and place the strap connector directly along the side of the gusset. The top of your gusset should be one inch wide and should match up perfectly. And then you'll base that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. So my video ended while I was in the middle of it, just turned off. Um, so what I did was then I turned my lining um, so that it was right sides out and I'm, I placed it down inside the exterior and then I placed the lining. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just said that I placed the lining inside the exterior. I match up. Um, the top of each of the four side seams first and I clip in place and then clipped in place all the way around. Now I'm going to sew that together using a one half inch seam allowance all the way around the top. When I sew across the um, strap connector, I'm going to um, back stitch to give it a little extra strength. Which 
just made me realize that I absolutely did not backstitch across the other one, so I'm going to go do that right now. I didn't even notice that I sewed over it. I think my video turning off on me has me out of frustrated so yeah. all right so we're going to trim this down to about a quarter inch except I'll leave the extra where the strap connectors are to turn this right side out. Through the hole in the bottom of the pocket. I absolutely double checked and I do not have any rainbow. I even looked at my past orders. I get the majority of my hardware right now from um, mormino.com. So I just went through all of my Mormino orders to see what I bought. Did not buy strap adjusters at all. How oh, I managed to get all the rest of my rainbow hardware and not order any of those, I don't know. And actually, I think I did not order any nickel, black nickel either, but I have, oh, and I just placed my other order was taking a little break after my video just ended on me um and i probably should have gotten more nickel and instead i just bought more rainbow zipper poles i don't know it's hard for me to think ahead what to order that's why the zipper packs work out so well for me where they're already separated by color all right just take your time and turn this all right sides out just tuck the zipper pocket down inside right now. Just until we get everything else where it's supposed to be. This is like the most colorful fun bag. I really am digging it. Alright, so you want to press the seam um, all the way around the top. I'm going to go to the iron and press that really well. And I make sure I roll the seam between my fingers um, so that it's, I don't know, pulled out all the way. I don't know what to call that or how to. Yeah. So I'm just going to go press the seam. All right, I, print, I pressed the top seam well, and now I'm just going to fold the bottom edge of the zipper pocket inside um, by about half an inch or quarter of an inch. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly one or the other as long as it's even on both sides. And I'm just going to put some clips on here to hold it in place. We are so close to being done now. Now I'm just going to top stitch this closed. I'm 
using my shorter stitch length um, and an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now to top stitch, um, I'm going to turn the bag inside out. This is how I top stitch all of my bags. All right, and that top seam is pressed nicely. So I just choose a spot where I'll start my top stitch. Um, generally along the, the back side. Increase your stitch length. And again, we all know what to, what seam allowance I'm using by now, but it's an eighth of an inch. going to trim my threads. Alright, All right, well, 
let's make the strap. I'm just going to turn this up right side out real quick. And obviously I'll give it a, a good press later. So we have two strap panels. You could cut your strap one continuous length um, if you have that much length of fabric. I like to generally cut in two pieces and then sew them together. So I'm just Placing the two ends of the strap panels together perpendicular, um, so at a 90 degree angle, and matching up the ends, and then I'm going to draw a diagonal line. One corner of the top strap to one corner of the bottom strap piece and then I'm going to sew using my shorter stitch length directly along that line all right and now I'm going to trim this triangle off. First you want to open up your strap and make sure that it that you did it correctly, that it made one continuous strap piece. Um, I sew this on the diagonal so that you don't have a large lump of fabric where they're sewed together and you can still slide it through your adjuster. All right so I just pressed the seam allowance open and I'm going to top stitch along each side of that which I don't know if it serves any purpose other than I like the way it looks. Now I'm going to press the strap and I'll show you how after it's pressed. All right, so I pressed my whole strap. I pressed it first in half, bringing the long straight edges together, create a crease down the center, open back up and press each of the long edges into that center crease and then refold along the center crease until you have a one inch wide strap. Now we're going to top stitch along each of the long folded edges. Um, I'm using my longer top stitching stitch length of 4.5 and of course an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
So now we need to trim the threads off this end. I'm going to get a strap adjuster. I'm going to press one end under by half an inch and then again by one whole inch and press that nice and flat. All right, I'm going to slide um, going to slide the center bar on my strap slider into that fold and then I'm going to top stitch through the strap. I'm going back to my shorter stitch length for this um, and I'm just top stitching along that folded edge through all of the layers across the width of the strap. And I just back stitch a few times. And you can stitch a second line of stitching here if you wish, just for added stability. Um, now I'm going to place, let me get this right. Okay, so I'm going to come from this side of my rectangle ring. Okay, so my adjuster is on the inside, the free end is on the outside. I want to bring the free end back up through the strap adjuster over the middle bar and then slide it and just make sure that it adjusts properly so that you know you have done that correctly. And this makes a nice long crossbody strap, so if you need it longer or shorter, um, just cut those pieces longer or shorter. Um, this is, I think, pretty long and should work for a lot of people. And then you want to press this end under by half an inch. I just put it through the rectangle ring under by half inch and then again by one whole inch and I'm just going to slide the rectangle ring into that second fold and I'm not actually going to press this but you can and I'm just going to first top stitch along the folded edge through all the layers. You could also use a rivet here and I back stitch a few times just for added strength. And then I'm going to stitch one more time through all the layers as close as I can get to the hardware. Trim all your threads and then you have an on a break on a break crossbody. So that's the finished bag. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful. Um, I will change the strap slider out as soon as my rainbow ones get here. Thankfully, Lauren at Mormino is a fast shipper. Um, so yeah. This pocket I think is perfect. I like to put my chapstick in here, nail clippers, things that I access that are small. Um, this pocket I would use for my cell phone, keys, things like that. Um, or you can put your cell phone in the back slip pocket and then you can just slide it in and out. 
Um, so I love the different pockets and different storage options in this bag. It's still small, but it keeps you organized. Um, and then it's crossbody, so hands-free. So this is a bag I like to use in the summertime to be hands-free when I'm going places. I mean, when you can go places again. So I hope you enjoy.